Hey guys, so I'm going to give you a quick rundown on classic studio por portraiture lighting. So uh, with this type of lighting, there are four types of lights that are combined to create portraits. There's the main light, the fill light, the back slash hair light, and the background light. So the main light is usually the brightest and it sets the mood of the portrait. If you remember from our lighting lecture uh, way at the beginning of the semester, there were the t different types of lighting that we talked about, such as high front or butterfly beauty light, 45 degree loop lighting, Rembrandt lighting, and side lighting. So this is what sets the mood. The fill light is usually above or next to the camera, and it's one to nine stops dimmer than the main light. So it's not as bright, it's not setting the mood, but it is illuminating the other part of the subject. The back and hair light uh, is what highlights the edges of the hair of the person and it separates them from the background. And the background light can also um, help separate the subject from the background, can create a vignette, it can help create a mood as well. So if you remember from back in that lecture, uh, I used my little George, Jim Morrison figure to show you guys. So here are the different lights just by their own. Selves. And the background light's going to be kind of tough to tell the difference on, uh, but let's go ahead and show you anyway. So here's the main light, and I'm using a side light to create the mood to make a, you know, kind of dramatic type of lighting for this figure. And here is the fill light, so it's not going to be as bright. If you go back, it's not as bright as that one, but it's just filling in fill light, the shadow side, okay? Uh, the hair light is just barely raking the edges of the figure to help separate it from the background. And like I said, for this shot, it's pretty kind of tough to see, but uh, there is a slight background light hitting um, the back of the figure behind it. Okay, so these next shots are adding the different lights together. So here's the main light by itself, again, creating that mood. All right, and then we have the hair light. So you're gonna really see the difference right around here. So let's go back a bit. And you can see here, there's no separation. It's going almost completely dark into the background. And now there is separation by adding that slight hair light. Okay. All right, and now with this one, we did add a background light. And like I said, it's, you know, the background is meant to stay dark, so it's not maybe as obvious, um, but it is there. And then adding the fill light. So now you can see here, we can see way more definition in what's going on in comparison to up here. All right, and so for this photo shoot, I actually didn't use a separate light for the fill light. What I used was a large white piece of cardboard um, to reflect light that was coming over here from the main light back in, and that's called a reflector. Reflectors might be white, silver, gold, so the most common types of reflectors that you might use or might see. And you can really change the feeling of a photo by how close that reflector is. So um, here's a progression of with the reflector getting closer and closer. So we do have some light coming in. And as you can see, I kept bringing it closer and closer until it's almost exactly the same intensity. So let's go back a little bit and just really pay attention to over here. So we still have really dramatic, adding a bit more. You can still see that it's still brighter on this side than this side of the nose. And now starting to even now way more into the point where it's just as bright. And like I said, that's just using a white card. And in fact, here's a little diagram, a photo of what I use. So here's what I use from main light. It's actually a really old movie light that somebody had given me from the, I believe it's from the 50s or 60s. It's brightest, okay, and it's coming down here to give this side light type of feel. And if you notice, I have this white card back here. That was actually to block the light from hitting the background as much. Uh, without that, it was also hitting the background really harshly, so I didn't want it to be that intense. Um, the backlight 
was this bit of light barely skimming the background surface. The hair light was my little desk lamp barely skimming the edges of the figure. The fill light was this white card that um, as I was taking the photo I was holding up next to it and moving it back and forth to make it more or less intense. All right. And something important to say is that the camera position can really make an impact on what's going on. Um, as your position changes, so will how the light looks. So you can only really judge what's happening um, through looking through the camera. And obviously, I mean, look at this crazy setup I ba have back here with my messy office happening. But yet, these are the photos that the camera is seeing. So I hope this was helpful and you guys... Uh, getting an introduction into classic studio lighting. Down here in my lecture, if we keep going down, we have uh, George Harrell, some of George Harrell shots, and he really um, was the epitome of classic Hollywood glamour lighting. And as you can see here, this is his self-portrait, but this one, he has the butterfly lighting happening, that really high front light, and you have that a uh, little bit of a shadow under the nose which gives the name butterfly. Here is the loop light, a little loop of shadow happening here. Uh, here's the Rembrandt light where it's moved over even more and leaving just the um, little bit of light on the cheek. That's the classic signature of a Rembrandt light. And here's some side lighting, although taken from the dark side.